Okay, so we're all about brushes. Now, these, the, you know, there's a huge variety of brushes out there, aren't there? You know, there's, there's every different shape and size and brush you could think of. And it, a lot of the new ones have all got silly names, haven't they? Um, and, uh, but I'm not even gonna mention those. Not even gonna mention those. Um, all I use is two or three basic brushes. I'm just gonna talk you through them. Um, if you haven't got the same brushes, really don't panic. It isn't the end of the world. First of all, my biggest brush, really is this number 12 flat brush. It's a Liquitex brush. It's an acrylic brush. Really, really useful. Um, you know, if you've got one similar, that's great. Doesn't have to be number 12. Doesn't have to be flat, but it is useful. These flat brushes, really quite useful. Um, I use this a lot in the tutorials. So if you have got something similar, ideal. If you've got something kind of similar, that's great too. So number 12 flat. And then we've got its little baby brother, which is uh, number four flat. It's about half an inch wide. Now this is my real go-to brush. I use this more than any other brush in all of the tutorials. It's my favorite. It's kind of like my best friend brush. Okay, so this is the brush that I go for a pint with, you know, on a, on a Sunday lunchtime. This is, this is that brush, my favorite brush. Then I've got a little fan brush. This is a, a Galleria brush. Now it's a fan shape, you can see the dome. I don't really use this that much. I use it sometimes. It's, it's kind of useful for getting certain um, certain shapes, certain mark making. Don't use it a lot. So this is kind of a little, this is a casual acquaintance brush, okay? Maybe don't go for a pint with this one. This is just my sort of say hello to it in the street on the way down to the post office. It's one of those brushes. So it's good to have, but certainly not essential. Okay. Lastly, I've got a little watercolor brush. Um, this is a number three little round watercolor brush. Again, if you've got a small one, uh, a small brush, I should say, if you've got a small brush, that's really useful. You know, number two, number three, number four, something like that is perfect. Again, I don't use it a lot. Sometimes for detail, it's quite useful, but I'm gonna show you other ways of creating detail, which, um, you know, give much more life than a brush can. So I've got one, you know, if you've got one too, fantastic. If you haven't, it's not the end of the world. So we've got our brushes. Now we're coming on to the real fun stuff. Now I've got two other brushes that I like to use. Now, check out this old boy. This is a good decorator's brush. You're not a good decorator's brush. It's a terrible decorator's brush, I should say. Sort of thing you've got in your shed. Um, 199 for a pack of five from your local DIY store. And as soon as you get out of its packet, can you see the, the bristles all kind of go in different directions and trying to escape? Now, you know, to some people, they're horrified when they see that. To me, that's really exciting. And I'm gonna show you why, and I'm gonna tell you why I use these and why they're so exciting as we go through the lessons. Um, and you're, you know, you're never gonna look at these brushes in the same way again. You're gonna think they're great also. So I've got this brush, it's about um, an inch and a half. And I've got a slightly smaller one. So that's about an inch. And again, can you see, it's got these sort of bristles all over the place, really, really fantastically useful. So we use that a lot as well. And again, I'll show you uh, the reason why I do that. So that's great. Finally, last couple of things, we've got a painting knife or a palette knife. Now these come in all different shapes and sizes. This is a Winsor & Newton, number 24 it tells me, I didn't know it was number 24. Number 24, Winsor & Newton. Um, it's my favorite, it's just the right size and shape for what I want. You can get really long ones, really large ones, all the rest of it, they're all fine too. But this is really, really useful. And as you can see, it's flexible. Can you see that, flexible steel? And we've got points and we've got sides. And again, when we go on to the techniques, I'm gonna show you how to use palette knives um, and how I use this particular one, which is really useful. And just to say, if you've got one of those sets that's got the plastic palette knives in, throw them away because they're a waste of time. Plastic palette knives are the devil's invention. You want a nice steel one and they're nice and flexible. They're just awesome, last your lifetime. These are fantastic. Okay, a couple of last things that we put the paint down with. I've got um, a good old toothbrush. Any old toothbrush would do, you know, steal one from the bathroom, go and buy one from, you know, the cheapest one you can find in the supermarket. Um, and again, I'm going to show you how I use it. I'm going to show you why I use it. Um, and it might be used in ways that you might not be thinking as well. So uh, keep your eyes peeled for that. So these are really useful, old toothbrush. And finally, just a piece of old sponge. Now, you know, you can go to the art shop and spend quite a lot of money on, you know, really high quality sea sponge. 
um, which a lot of the, the books and uh, your art teachers might tell you, but to be perfectly honest, you'll get just as good a result. This is a piece of an old car washing sponge. Big car washing sponge, costs about 20 pence, ripped up into pieces, really, really useful. Um, so a piece of car washing sponge. That's the basics of putting the paint down. <laughs>